So it's my great pleasure to introduce uh, Dr. Sami Quadri from uh, University of Helsinki, Department of Medicine. Sami, the floor is yours. Thank you so much, Amalia, for the um, introduction and uh, good afternoon, everyone, or good morning or evening, depending on where you are. So as this audience is very well aware, uh, Obesity is a key risk factor for uh, fatty liver disease, and it's been estimated that around 60% of all patients with NAFL are obese. Of the remaining 40%, many are also overweight. Obese patients are also at an especial risk of developing progressive liver disease with steatohepatitis. And of course, the endpoint that we really care about uh, here is advanced liver fibrosis with either bridging fibrosis or cirrhosis. However, an ongoing challenge for us is the timely identification of those patients who are already progressing towards this end stage liver disease. And to this end, recent, uh, the most recent guidelines from um, ESL and other organizations recommend the use of uh, blood based fibrosis biomarkers, um, primarily the uh, FIB4 index or the NAFL fibrosis score or NFS uh, to screen uh, for advanced fibrosis in at risk individuals. Uh, some other, um, perhaps less commonly used uh, scores validated in the context of NAFLD are the aspartate amino transferase to platelet ratio index, uh, the BARD score, which incorporates uh, knowledge of, of the BMI, uh, AST-LT ratio, and diabetes, and also the quite recently uh, published HEPAMED fibrosis score, or HFS, uh, which is also a, a multi-component score comprising many clinical and biochemical variables. In recent years, however, there's been a heightened interest for the use of uh, some perhaps more accurate uh, direct biomarkers of fibrosis. And perhaps the uh, best contender here is uh, PROC3, which is a direct uh, neoepitope biomarker of, um, of uh, fibrosis and collagen turnover. And it's been incorporated in two scores which have been developed uh, for, for NAFL uh, advanced fibrosis, the ADAPT and the TIPSI3 scores. One could perhaps say that a limitation of, of the biomarker literature is that these biomarkers are usually validated in cohorts from hepatology clinics. And this of course is uh, is natural as, as, as those, uh, those cohorts are the ones which contain a, a large amount of, of these patients and also with a liver biopsy. However, um, in the context of obesity, uh, they have relatively few patients with very severe or extreme stages of, 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 of BMI. Um, and this might be an issue then uh, because we're not quite sure uh, how these biomarkers work when applied in populations with a high prevalence of obesity, such as in diabetologist clinics or endocrinologist clinics treating obese patients. And as such, the effect of obesity on biomarkers remains poorly characterized. Uh, based on recent data, however, we know that the performance of these commonly used biomarkers may be suboptimal in populations with a high prevalence of type 2 diabetes, and one could perhaps then speculate whether uh, this might have something to do with the higher degree of obesity also seen uh, amongst those patients. Of uh, a new limitation of both the C4 and NFS scores, uh, which incorporate age as a predictor variable, is that their specificity is known to decrease uh, when used in populations uh, with um, in the age category of 65 years plus. And, uh, in, this, uh, and in this regard, in, in 2017, it was shown that uh, one would need to use a separate uh, cutoff uh, when using these biomarkers in this uh, age category. And somewhat analogous to this, um, all of these three scores, NFS BART and FIPSI3, incorporate BMI as a predictor uh, in, in their calculation, and uh, it therefore uh, arises or begs the question whether their performance might, that might be decreased when applied in obese populations. So we then asked, asked the following questions. First, what are the optimal fibrosis biomarkers to identify stage F3, F4 fibrosis in overweight or obese individuals? And second, does BMI affect the diagnostic performance of fibrosis biomarkers? And uh, with an especial emphasis on scores incorporating BMI in their formulae. So for this purpose, we recruited 
378 patients who were undergoing a liver biopsy at the Helsinki University Hospital. Uh, these, these were mostly uh, patients undergoing weight loss surgery. Uh, there was a, a subset uh, of about 70 patients who were also referred to gastroenterologists for evaluation due to suspected NAFO. The BMI ranged from 26 to 75 in this cohort, uh, so a pretty wide uh, BMI range. We performed a clinical study for these patients within a week of the liver biopsy. Uh, this included measurement of concentrations of proc 3 from blood, blood samples. And exclusion criteria, among others, were liver diseases other than NAFOL, excessive alcohol consumption, and use of steatosis-inducing drugs. Uh, for these patients, we calculated the following biomarker scores. Uh, so pretty much the ones I showed you before. So the FIT4 index, the NAFOL fibrosis score, the APRI-BARD, the uh, HFS or hepamid fibrosis score, and also the uh, PRO-C3 incorporating adaptant tip c 3 scores. And here are the most important uh, clinical uh, characteristics uh, of the cohort. 71% of them were females. On the average, uh, the patients were uh, morbidly obese. 43% uh, had type 2 diabetes, 15% NASH, and 8% uh, advanced fibrosis. And let's move on to the results. So here are shown um, as a bars, the OROX or the areas on the rock uh, for these um, biomarkers to identify advanced fibrosis shown in a descending order. And the biomarkers with the best um, uh, AUC uh, were the ADAPT score, FIP4, FIPC3, and the HEPAMES fibrosis score. All of these scores uh, had an OROC of uh, 0 0.85 or above. Uh, what was the interesting, uh, of course, was the fact that FIP4 had pretty much an equal diagnostic performance as compared to ADAPT uh, and FIPC3, which incorporates PROC3. And if you look at um, down the line here, uh, you'll see that NFS had a significantly poorer diagnostic accuracy uh, overall, and uh, BARD had, uh, well, it was essentially uh, useless in this regard for, for identifying advanced fibrosis in this cohort. So next, we uh, take a look, took a look at the sensitivities and specificities when applying the previously validated cutoffs for all, the, all of these scores. Um, so below these graphs uh, uh, are shown uh, the percentage of patients uh, scored in the indeterminate region. And this means uh, between the two cutoffs, which are used for the FIP4, NFS, and HFS scores, as you know, uh, the lower cutoff is used to exclude fibrosis, higher cutoff to, to, uh, to rule in uh, advanced fibrosis. Uh, and uh, perhaps if you look at the overall performance, the ADAPT score here had perhaps the best combined sensitivity and specificity, uh, seeing that uh, it, uh, it has only one cutoff and is uh, adequate to, to uh, classify all patients without leaving any of them uh, in the indeterminate region. Looking at the FIB4, uh, it performed pretty much as expected uh, with regard to sensitivity and specificity and, and classified about a third of all patients. And as indeterminate, this is pretty much uh, as, as, uh, as, is, as is seen in other studies as well. Uh, same was seen for HFS. However, NFS was a, a bit problematic because it classified above half of the whole cohort as indeterminate and, and thus could not be uh, used effectively. The APRI and BARD scores uh, did not uh, perform adequately to use as a single cutoff uh, in the, for using these single cutoffs, which have been previously suggested for them. So next we move to uh, examine the effect of BMI on biomarker performance. And to this end, we divided this cohort into four groups based on BMI quartiles. Here you can see the median BMIs in each, each quartile. And, and, and here are shown uh, the OROCs for the biomarkers to identify advanced fibrosis. And uh, indeed, we saw that there was no, uh, at least no statistically significant effect uh, by BMI on the OROCs of these scores. There might have been a trend towards decrease for, for NFS, but it was not significant. Uh, and we concluded that the overall diagnostic capacity was un unaffected uh, by BMI. However, when looking at the sensitivities and specificities of these biomarkers, uh, we saw that the uh, performance of NFS deteriorated as a function of BMI. Uh, here are shown in two panels data for the lower cutoff um, on the upper panel and for the higher cutoff on the lower panel. If you look here, uh, this higher cutoff is used, of course, to, to rule in and it needs high specificity. Uh, 
and it had 95% specificity in, in, in the leaner patients, but it decreased to 54% uh, in the extremely obese. And, and at the same time, sensitivity increased and a similar uh, kind of trend was seen for the lower cutoff. Uh, of course, one would expect if, if this biomarker was not affected by BMI, that there would be horizontal lines uh, throughout. And according to our hypothesis, uh, the other BMI containing scores, BARD and FIPSI3, also similarly deteriorated as a function of BMI. Uh, FIPSI3 had a good diagnostic uh, accuracy to rule in in the lean patients, uh, but it also deteriorated in the extremely obese. However, when looking at all the other scores, they were essentially unaffected uh, by the degree of BMI. And uh, for here you can see, for example, for FIB4, it was very stable ac across all of the quartiles. So next, uh, because uh, this cohort included uh, mostly uh, obese individuals, uh, we wanted to validate these findings in other cohorts. So we recruited or, uh, two, or we uh, validated these in two uh, separate hepatology clinic cohorts from Sweden and Italy. Uh, the Swedish cohort included about 650 patients, the Italian cohort uh, 230 patients. And here are the uh, main uh, characteristics. And uh, looking at the performance of NFS within uh, all of these uh, 1,200 individuals, then we saw uh, the similar finding when stratified in these uh, distinct BMI categories, uh, that indeed the specificity of NFS deteriorates uh, as a function uh, going from the uh, category of, of completely lean patients to the morbidly obese. And I wish to draw your, your attention to the specific detail here. Uh, what we noticed is that the sensitivity and specificity of this uh, lower cutoff in overweight or lean individuals was essentially uh, similar uh, to those of the higher cutoff in the severely or morbidly obese patients. And what this essentially implies is that these cutoffs should be then adjusted upwards as BMI increases uh, to preserve uh, the intended diagnostic accuracy. So uh, in this regard, we then uh, performed a, 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 a derivation of, of new BMI adjusted cutoffs. And based on the previous data, we divided the patients in, in three groups, uh, those uh, under, with BMI under 30, uh, 30 to uh, 39, and then 40 and above. And, and we, uh, uh, we uh, performed derivation and validation in separate individuals. And we indeed were able to uh, validate uh, these uh, BMI adjusted cutoffs when which then uh, uh, um, fixed the um, performance with regard to NFS across the uh, entire uh, BMI range. So uh, to then summarize, uh, the sensitivity and specificity of scores containing BMI in their formulae, they're significantly affected uh, uh, as a function of obesity. And um, because of this in the obese patients, uh, based on our data, the preferable first-line score is still the very simple FIB4 score because it is uh, inex inexpensive, of course, very uh, easy to implement and is unaffected by BMI. Uh, with regard to the uh, ProC3 incorporating scores, ADAPT was the highest performer. And uh, however, they had a similar aura to FIB4 in our data, but use of the single cutoff is better as no patients are classified uh, in the indeterminate zone. So the they essentially provided a much better uh, diagnostic yield. And if NFS has been implemented uh, in, uh, in the screening of advanced fibrosis, uh, we uh, recommend considering uh, adopting some kind of BMI-adjusted BMI cutoffs, because uh, if using the, just a single cutoff in obese individuals will uh, lead, a, lead to a very high rate of false positive findings. If you're interested in uh, looking at this data more carefully, it was uh, published recently in the Journal of uh, Clinical Endocrinology and Metabolism. And uh, to conclude, I wish to uh, thank um, our group uh, and especially our collaborators uh, from Italy, Luca Valenti and Serena Palusi uh, and colleagues for providing the validation data. And, and in Sweden, uh, Hannes Hagström, Matthias Ekstedt and Stergios Kechagias for providing uh, those uh, Swedish validation uh, patients and also to, uh, to the folks at Nordic Bioscience for providing the PROC3 uh, assays. Uh, thank you very much and uh, uh, I'm available for questions. Thank you, Sami. This was very interesting.
And uh, I will start with uh, some question from the Q&A. So we have Giulio Marchesini that is asking, were all biopsies by needle not wedged during metabolic surgery? Right. Uh, in our cohort, most of the patients were wedged, uh, which of course is a, is a limitation in that regard, uh, with regard to uh, fibrosis uh, uh, staging. However, in the validation cohorts that we em em employed, uh, those were patients who, were, uh, who had indeed needle biopsies. Great. And uh, a second question from Renata De Maria is, uh, does using multiple scores on the same patient, uh, for example, NFS plus V4, decrease the number of patients in the indeterminate group for both scores? Uh, that's a very good question. And, and yes, it, it, uh, it, it does. I wish I had the uh, uh, figure, but it's in the paper that I referenced. Uh, we also tested this. Um, NFS and FIB4 in combination do not really provide uh, very much benefit, but we, uh, we found that if you combine FIB4 uh, in a sequence of staging with, with uh, ADAPT, especially, uh, then uh, the, uh, the number of false positive findings uh, increased, uh, or sorry, decreased uh, significantly. So yeah, it seemed to be uh, beneficial in that regard. And I can even show you here uh, this figure uh, if you're using FIB4 only. Uh, and, and FIB4 plus ADAPT, you will uh, decrease the amount of full positives while maintaining uh, true positives uh, uh, quite nicely. Great, uh, so I have a, I think uh, Christopher has a question. Well, thank you, Amalia. Well, well done, Sammy, that was very nice. I haven't read your paper, but um, ADAPT obviously has in it age and diabetes status. Yeah. And so I wonder whether you did any sensitivity analysis by younger or older age or diabetes versus no diabetes within your cohort of 300 odd people. And then finally, did you have Fibroscan to compare this with the performance of Fibroscan in this cohort, given that they're not very obese? Uh, thank you, uh, Christopher. Very good questions. We did sensitivity analysis with regard to diabetes. And we found uh, a reduction, a similar change in test performance, as in with obese and lean individuals. Um, however, of course, stratifying diabetes also, you know, there's also the uh, BMI component inherently. We did not have enough patients to do some sort of substratification, so it's down to speculation then. Um, and uh, regarding age. Uh, we did not have a very high number of, of patients of 65 plus, for example. So, uh, so that was also not really an option to, to, to study very well in this, this cohort of ours. And unfortunately, I wish we had Fibroscan, but uh, uh, at the time this cohort was, uh, uh, was studied, uh, we didn't do that uh, at least for too many of them. So no, that wasn't available as well. Thank you. Thank you.